Hello, beautiful souls. I wanted to take just a moment today to go over looking at your overview of your human design chart and starting to understand what some of the components of it are. What are some of the things that we talk about when we look at our human design chart? And how do we start to kind of decipher some of, some of the information within it? So I have for you here my human design chart. And I want to just show you some of the components on there so that when you look at yours and you go through some of the human design classes or talks where we're looking at different things and different aspects in our chart, you'll have a better understanding of where to look on your chart so that you can follow along and get that deeper inspiration uh, as far as this blueprint and this compass for yourself within your life. So when we start with looking at the human design chart, you're going to look at your overview and the first thing it's going to show you what uh, is what is your type. And for my human design chart, you're going to see uh, the outline is a little different than the overview page that you have for you. Yours is going to say it on the top there, but it's either going to say generator, manifesting generator, projector, reflector, or manifester. So when we talk about what our type is, our type is based into one of these five categories that start to depict one layer of the energy that you're holding. And this layer really starts to describe your aura and how you attract or uh, put energy out into the world. So I'm going to say attract because attract is for four out of the five types and to project out into the world and to put out would be the manifester type. So that is the type that actually is outputting information into the universe. So when you look at your type, your type is going to describe how you interact with other people, what your aura type is like. It's going to describe to you how absorbing your field is for a generator and a manifesting generator. It's kind of more of an overall absorbing field, which means that you really are able to respond to the world around you and towards what is right for you. A projector, you're a little bit different. You actually absorb more one-on-one -on -one with those around you. Therefore, you will have a tendency in groups to get a little more overwhelmed by the amount of energy around you. Whereas a generator or a manifesting generator can handle more energy fields around them and they basically get to pick and choose what is correct for them. Whereas a projector, you tend to be able to be that inspiration and that guide on a more one-on-one -on -one basis. So when you do get into group situations, it can overrun your system a little bit. And so there are uh, different ways, different techniques that are wonderful into being able to get other people's energy out of your field. So then we have our beautiful manifestors. Your aura is going to be actually pulsing out. So within this universe where we live, one of the universal laws is the law of polarity. It's the law of magnetism. And so everything is really functioning on this beautiful give and take, this attraction. So this magnetic pull or this electromagnetic pull. So we are human bodies who are embodying not only electrical energy, but magnetic energy. And there's kind of a balance within there. So everything we do, we have magnetism towards it or repulsion towards it. So most of the types have what is called a magnetic field, an absorbing field. But you as a manifester, you get to be that part of that electrical impulse that sends out frequencies and waves of ideas and inspirations for others to be able to receive. So you of all the types is the type that gets to really implement ideas, be the inventor, start new things, try new things and put new ideas out into creation and allow others to get to respond to it. So your field actually sends out seeds and creative ideas to basically help inspire other people. Now, reflectors, 
We love you so very much. And we really appreciate the work that you are doing for us here on the planet, which is to be a beautiful mirror for the energy in which our world is projecting. So a reflector is really one of the most expansive aura types. When a reflector is out amongst people, they are absorbing everyone. So more of a community absorbing auric field. Reflectors are here to be a mirror for us to show us the health and vitality of our environment and the things that we are creating in this life, which means that a reflector many times is just showing us through their energy, through their levels of happiness, joy, or if they are frustrated and not happy and joyful, what the energy in the room is, what the energy at work is, what the energy in a relationship is, what the energy at home is. So they are very much a mirror towards all of everyone else's energy fields. And when we are all working together in harmony and happiness, a reflector is going to be joyful and happy and uplifted and one of the most jovial people that you will meet. And when there is a lot of chaos or hurt or the systems of how we're co-relating with each other are not in harmony, a reflector starts to get very upset or um, feel as though they're grumpy or things are not working for them. And so they are a guide for us to let us know that when we know who our reflectors are, we can watch them. And when they're not happy, we get the opportunity to see what is not in a state of health and vitality and how can we all band together in order to create harmony and flow within our community, within our living structures that we're all a part of. So this leads to these five types. We all hold one of these five types depending on our birthday and when we were, when we were born. But knowing that these five types were all meant to be flowing in unity and working together. None of us is meant to be an island unto ourselves. None of us is meant to be doing things just all on our own in the sense that we really are all about the human species, the human race, and how we all cohesively work together in order to move forward and to really expand in levels of consciousness as a human race, not just as individuals. That's why we have this pulse to connect, to share, to help, and to grow. So within this is just to know that we're not meant to just be here to live a selfish life and just do what's right for us. And it's really more about how we can each inspire each other so that we can take society as a whole, take humanity as a whole, and how can we keep the evolutionary process of our, our growth moving beyond just a 3D based world, beyond just survival mode. And how can we move into being spiritual adults as a whole species? So just evolving um, through the ascension path as a group and as a whole. So now we know what our type is based on our type. There's three important things that you're going to learn within your within your chart. Number one was the type, which we just talked about. Next is going to be what is our strategy? And then how do we implement that strategy in order to make decisions that are correct for us? So each type has their own strategy. So generators and manifesting generators are both generator types. Therefore, they're strategy is to respond. So remember the aura field of a generator type is kind of a, a beautiful uh, absorbing field around that gets to respond to the world around and get to pick and choose what is correct for you, which means as you move through life that you're meant to respond to what is coming into your reality. And from your inner authority, you get to decide whether or not it's correct for you. This is a whole new mind frame than really what a lot of the programming on planet Earth has been. Most 
of all the programming on planet Earth has been based on obligation, on doing what uh, others are telling us to do, what our family programming is, what our religious programming is, what our country programming is, or any number of insecurities or guilt trips or any kind of thing like that. So those are all not self compasses within our life all of any decision that we make that is based outside of ourselves based on somebody else's rules or regulations or any level of guilt or shame if we don't do what we think we're supposed to do that is called not self and that is not honoring our true strategy which is to respond so imagine a world where each person makes decisions in their life based on what's correct for you not on what you think you should do or what others are telling you to do and if we all from a compassionate truthful place started to really respond to yes this job feels right for me, or yes, this relationship feels right for me, or yes, this agreement feels right for me, or yes, this food feels right for me, then we would start to only say yes to that which was correct for us and our soul, our higher self. And therefore, more and more of our life would just be a complete hologram, a complete beautiful representation of the truth of our heart, the truth of what is right for us. So now, knowing that, our, that generator types are meant to respond. So that means that whatever you do in life through your inner authority, you get to start to do the experiment as it's called within human design and see what is it like if you start only agreeing to that which is correct for you. Now, we have our projector types and the projectors are here. You guys have beautiful wisdom, but your strategy is to wait for the invitation. And what that means is that because your aura is so focused and really quite a strong magnet, it means that whatever you're focused on, you're going to really start to pull into your reality and you will have even individuals coming into your reality asking you, or inviting you into situations, right? Into, do you want to do this? Or would you like to eat that? Or would you like to, you know, and all of these different ways in which we get invited into things. The problem is, again, there is such an energy of wanting to share information within the projectors field that that's going to be one of your greatest gifts and one of your greatest challenges as you start to learn to wait for the invitation but here's what this means for you you have a incredibly magnetic orc field which means that you could pretty much sit within your manifestation field and what it will do is draw to you that which brings you joy and happiness or that which is correct for you the flip side of that is that we got to turn off all of those worry receptors in the brain that start to think otherwise and worry about how things are going to work out if you sit and wait and trust. So for you, when the invitation comes, this is where it's vital for you to know what your inner authority is in order for you to make sure that you are saying yes or no to the things that are being invited into your reality. So if something's correct for you, you get to run that through your inner authority and decide whether or not you want to accept the invitation that has just come for you. So just to know that your strategy is to wait for the invitation. When the invitation comes, then you get to decide whether or not it's correct for you from your inner authority. Because the thing is, is once you've dedicated your energy as a yes to an invitation, there is a usually a longer standing commitment for you to what you have just agreed to. And you want to make sure that all of your future days and energies that you are putting into this project, the relationship or whatever it is that you've agreed to is correct for you and that it is actually uplifting you, making you happy and allowing a sense of joy and vitality into your life so your sense of soul purpose is fulfilled. So then we have what are our beautiful manifestors? 
And remember, the manifestor's auric field is actually pulsing outwards. So this means that instead of waiting or needing to respond to something, your job is to actually inform. And even though that may sound very simple, the thing is, is that you're a very, very, very quick thinker, which means that in order for you to slow down and inform people about what you're doing is not really your favorite thing to do. You really get so quick within your mind that in order to inform others, you're going to have to take a compassionate moment to slow down and really see who is around you in your life that is someone that you are informing of what you are doing, which means to share that instead of just running to the store, sometimes that you're going to actually let somebody know that you're going to the store so that they don't sit at home and worry about where did you go. So to inform is also how you share new ideas and inspirations for other people to respond to. So that really quick imaginative mind that you have that is always coming up with new ideas ideas, those new ideas and that quick mind is really meant to be shared with the community. And as you share with the community, some of the seeds may fall on fertile ground and some of the seeds, eh, it was a great idea, but let's not do that one, right? So no judgment here or there. The whole idea is that you're meant to just be constantly sprinkling these seeds and ideas and allowing it to go into the hearts and minds of others so they can decide whether or not it's correct for them and get to allow some of these ideas and inspirations to come into creation. So again, your strategy is actually to inform. And again, it is much like for the projector to wait for an invitation, <clears throat> it is going to be something that is going to be your greatest gift to those around you, but also your greatest challenge within yourself to start to really come out of the mind time and time again to be able to inform others of some of the processes that you're going through or some of the ideas or creations that you're doing. Now, our next type is going to be a reflector. And our reflector, your strategy is going to be to wait a lunar cycle. <laughs> so I know that doesn't sound exciting at all since that's a 28-day period. But within a 28-day lunar cycle, as a reflector, you're really reflecting the solar, the I am presences of everyone around you, right? And in a 28 day cycle, the moon actually goes through all of the gates in the chart, in the rave wheel. And I'll show an image of what a rave wheel looks like right here. So within a lunar cycle, in those 28 days, you will go through every single one of these gates, every single one of these gates as a moon moves through it, will activate and light up another place in your chart. Sometimes during the month, you, even though you are always a reflector, but sometimes there are gates lit up in your chart that will make you more of a projector or a manifester or a generator or even a manifesting generator. So as these gates move around, your uh going to have the ability to sense and feel the decisions that you are calling into your reality, you're going to get to sense and feel them from every single perspective. And if something is correct for you, you will have had the experience of feeling it all the way around and then getting to decide whether or not this is right for you. And I know this can sound like a, a ridiculous thing in this fast paced world to wait for something that long. But I will tell you that it is going to be one of the most beneficial things for you if you do not leap to conclusions or jump to taking action on very um, long standing projects or commitments or relationships. It's best if you have the time to really feel all the way around whether or not something's correct for you. And then you get to decide it based on the lunar cycle and on your own personal, your own personal compass of truth is whether or not it's correct for you. So you will know that it's correct 
all the way around. And again, remembering your gift here is to be a reflector of your community. And you need to make sure that every place you are, uh, the home where you live, the family that you live with, the job that you're in, and all of these have to be so harmonious and supportive for you because they become a part of your identity and who you are because you're constantly being the mirror for those realities that you're in. So you want to make sure that wherever you are, it is also supporting you. So we're looking at type strategy. And next is what is your inner authority? So when you know human design, this is the, the foundational pyramid, if you will, of the whole kind of system is that if you could live by your type, your strategy, and your inner authority, and you could do that for seven years, the whole idea of seven years is that within seven years, all of your cellular and genetic kind of makeup, uh, if you will, your body becomes brand new, that all of the old cells in your body are replaced by brand new cells. And as they're replaced, those brand new cells would have the new DNA coding of what you are healing and bringing into balance and truth in your life. So it's the whole foundation of any of the spiritual work or shadow work we do is knowing that when you heal stuff on an emotional level, it actually changes your DNA. So within seven years, if you continually kept moving by the compass of your truth, you would continuously be upgrading your DNA into higher and higher levels of consciousness. So within seven years, you would completely be a brand new person. And within that, everything else in your chart would just naturally go into place. There wouldn't really be any Anything else you would have to know within the chart other than your type, strategy, and inner authority. And if you lived that experiment to the T, it would completely harmonize the rest of your chart. So, uh, but we are curious human beings. And so it's really fun to actually know all about the different things within the chart. Your inner authority is going to be based on uh, what is lit up in your chart. So for mine, you will see that it is the emotional solar plexus, which is coming from this brown triangle on the right-hand side of your chart. So you could be emotional solar plexus inner authority. You could be a sacral inner authority, which would be the red box down at the bottom, kind of in the middle. Or you could be a splenic inner authority, which is uh, if the mine was colored in, it would also be brown. And that is uh, just coming from an instinctual place. Or you could be ego directed inner authority, or as a reflector, they would be no inner authority, which would mean that the lunar cycle is what is helping to direct them. And so knowing within the chart what your inner authority is, is going to give you the understanding of where your yes and no's are coming from and how to actually start listening to your body, honestly, uh, and allowing your body to share with you the voice of your subconscious and your higher mind and getting us out of our head. Because the truth is, is that our body is always giving us exactly what is correct for us. And I know each and every one of us can think of times where we entered into a situation and we went, oh, I don't think this is a good idea. But our head comes in right away and says, oh, but if I don't, they'll think I don't like them or, um, you know, that's, you know, my this is my family, so I better or whatever beliefs come in, there's, there's so many that we make up in our mind. And these are all coming from our not self conditioning and programs that we've bought into. So many times our truth comes to us and we will talk ourselves in our head out of our truth. And we will go with what we think is right. <laughs> and then later on go like, man, I knew it all along from the very mo moment I met them. I knew they weren't right for me, but dot, dot, dot. So now we get to start to go like, okay, what is our inner authority? So the quickest one is going to be the splenic, which is the brown triangle on the left-hand side. And the splenic center is very instinctual. And it's right there, right then in the moment, you will absolutely know what your answer is. It'll feel on an instinctual level. I should move. 
or not move <laughs> kind of feeling. Here's the problem with that. It's so fast. And guess what's fast too? Your brain, your mind, your thoughts. <laughs> so the problem with that is, is that usually that instinct comes, but we're so in our head that we don't hear it. So the whole process is about getting out of our head. I love to tell people, get out of your head, drop into your heart from your heart. Listen, those instincts will come through. And then the next thing is, do you have the courage to act on your instincts and tell your head to take a back seat because you know it's coming from programs that don't even belong to you. So for the splenic, splenic, it's very fast, very instinctual, very quick. The next would be the sacral, which is the red square in the middle. The red square in the middle is going to be very fast feeling based, very guttural, very like in my gut, my gut knows, I listen to my gut feeling, that kind of thing. And a lot of times it comes with sounds like mm, or Ugh, kind of ideas in there. So in this again is to follow our gut, follow our gut feeling. And when those gut feelings come through, same thing, the mind is going to come in like a racehorse right on top of it. And your job again is to trust your gut feeling. And can you start to say yes and no from your gut responses and decide to stand up for your truth, even if it means going against belief systems, even if it means going against what others are doing and standing up for your truth. Because guess what? The more and more you stand up for your truth, the more and more that the things that are not correct for you start to get detoxed and weeded out of your life. And you start to call in like a magnet member, drawing in from your auric field stuff to respond to that will start to be more and more in alignment with your truth. So you can fill up your whole Field, your whole reality with only things that are in alignment and a guttural yes for you. And that's what you can do. The next quick, I would say, was going to be the ego directed. Um, and this is going to come from the yellow triangle in, uh, sorry, it's the yellow diamond in the middle. And it's your identity center. And this identity center in here is really about many times hearing yourself say, what is correct for you. So this is actually uh, more of a projector. So this is going to be someone who's a projector. Uh, and when you can share your ideas with other people, it's not about what they're telling you. That's not the point. The point is to have good support teams and friends around you that you could talk to, that you could hear yourself talk. And as you say it out loud, there's something that kind of clicks inside when it feels right for you. Like you'll say it out loud and you'll be like, yes, that's exactly what I need to do. And you actually don't need anybody else's input into what is or is not correct for you. Sometimes it's just a matter of having other energy around you that you can bounce your ideas off of. And it's you inner directed by your own inner compass as to what is correct for you that you get to guide yourself with. And then again, the, uh, the reflector is really allowing uh, yourself to feel yourself through all your different personalities as the lunar uh, cycle moves through you and then getting to decide what is correct for you. So within your chart, you're also going to see some a word on there that says definition. And the definition can come in one of four forms. It's either going to be a single definition, a split definition, a triple split definition, or a quadruple split definition. I'm just going to very briefly brush over this. But what this is really implying is that if you took one of your defined centers, a defined center is a center that is colored in. And I'm going to come back as to why it's colored in. So if you were to put your finger on a defined center and you could trace it down to the next defined center. And if you could do like a maze and you could get through these channels to every single center without taking your finger off of the chart, that is called a single definition. It means that every single defined center is connected to each other through one of the channels. A split definition is not going to have a connection between all of them. And it could be 
a simple uh, split definition, which is basically two halves, so two parts. So they'll be potentially imagine if it was two defined centers connected and they were only connected to each other, but not to all of the other defined centers. And then the other defined centers are all connected together. So just to know that expanding from that, a triple split means that it's three segments. So that would be six defined centers that each of them are in twos. And there could potentially be some with three in there, but just as an example that you could have six defined centers but no more than two are connected to each other. So you have kind of three sections in there. That's a triple split. And it goes as far as a quadruple split. It's pretty rare. Um, someone like that is either going to have eight or nine of the centers defined within their chart. And then they are going to be in four separate kind of segments as far as how they are connected. So when you think about a defined center, a defined center is one of the ones that is colored in in your chart. The only type that has no defined centers is going to be a reflector. But a reflector will have gates and they will have channels. So your defined center is determined by if you have an active gate within your chart, an active gate is one of the one through 64 numbers, which is highlighted within your chart. Your gates are determined through your astrological placement at the time of your birth and also 88 degrees or about three months before the time of your birth. And those are the numbers that are on the left-hand side of your chart under design and the right-hand side of your chart under personality. So you'll see these two columns here. Your personality is defined by the exact moment when you entered into this reality. That is why it is so important to know as best as you can the exact time when you were born. Because even when it comes to minutes on your chart, there are subtleties that do change. You may not see it on a surface level, but human design goes pretty far down in layers. And even when it comes to minutes, there are some subtle things that do change within the chart. So that is where even if there were twins born who their charts may look identical in so many ways, kind of on the surface, you're going to see a lot of the subtleties underneath the tones and the colors and things like that are what changes in there and what creates some of the personality differences within a person or how they express themselves. Your personality, as you look at it, is reflecting itself through these different planetary systems that we have within our kind of our star map. So it goes Earth, sorry, it goes sun, earth, moon, north node, south node. And then you have Mercury, Venus, Mars. You're going to have Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. And it's hidden within the planetary system in here, but the human design chart will give you your Chiron placement, even though it does not activate a gate. It does activate a gate on your subconscious level as far as for you to understand which gate is holding your core wound that you came here to heal within this lifetime. So you are going to see numbers on the on the side of these planetary kind of logos on here and you're going to see a number and then a decimal point and then another number. So the first number on the left-hand side of the decimal point, that is your gate. When we say gate, this is what's corresponding with all of these numbers on the outer wheel of your rave I Ching. So all of these numbers, one through 64, that go on the outer wheel of your rave mandala, these are all corresponding with different numbers that are on your human design chart. And when you have a planetary system, that lands on one of these numbers, it ta -da, lights up your chart in that particular gate. So I'm actually going to highlight just the personality side. So if you were to look at just my personality side of my chart, this is all of the gates that were lit up 
because of the time and place where I was born. So these are all the planetary placements at my time of exact birth. So these are the places where more of my conscious awareness lies, more of my I am presence. So this is where the personality kind of sits atop of the vehicle and is directing it, hopefully, in this incarnation from a higher mind, from a higher perspective. So my job in this lifetime, and each of ours, if we choose it, is to get out of our shadow form expressions in all of these gates and to step into our higher mind expression in all of these gates. Every single one of these gates has three tones or frequencies in which we can express ourselves from them as far as either being in a shadow or a lower mind or not mind or not self mind into the gift or the balanced place or the place of neutrality within it or in the city or the enlightened state or that state of, of higher mind and expansion beyond just the physical realm. So each of these holds a significance in the pattern. When you look at your personality, each of these gates is uniquely imprinting you in a particular way in which your higher mind or soul consciousness is entering into your reality. The decimal point on the other side is going to be the next line down. So it's going to show your line. So a line is based on the I Ching or uh, what we would call our, 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 yun and your, our yin and yang of our chart. So I'm going to show you this rave mandala again. And if you look at the outer, outer, outer edge of it, you're going to see all of these things that look like just kind of like little black dashes and dots. Um, not super clear on this chart. But when you look at it up close, each and every one of these is completely different. They're either two dash lines or a whole line. So whole line or two dash lines. The two dashes are more feminine, the full line is more masculine. So each and every one of these numbers is holding different polarities or magnetism to them. And each of them, each gate based on its polarity is really having an innate desire to connect a channel. So to connect to the gate on the other end of the channel in order to complete a channel. So our whole life is about polarity. It's about being attracted towards things that are correct for us and feeling ourselves when we're not attractive or even repulsed from things that are not correct for us. So the line in our in our chart is part of what gives us our profile. Our profile is you're going to see it on your your uh, your chart there. Your profile is going to be one of a variety of different profiles. Mine is a 6-3. There's 12 different profiles that you can be. And of these, you get to see what yours are. And yours are based on your sun and earth from your personality side. And this is what creates your incarnation cross, which you will also see on there. And it's also based then on your sun and earth on your design side. So your line starts to determine the next layer underneath you. So it's your next kind of subtle characteristics or blueprint imprints that you have within you. And as you look at these, you're going to basically be able to see another range of energy within there. So every single gate has six lines or six frequencies that it can express itself as. So a 13-6 is going to be a different energy than say a 13-1. And the difference is very, very subtle in there, but it does add another layer of your own uniqueness to your blueprint. So just to know that that is what your profile is coming from and your profile is actually what is creating your incarnation cross. Your incarnation cross would be what might be considered your destiny or who you are on a soul level in this incarnation, what you have chosen to come and represent when you get your ego out of the way or all of your not self out of the way. And within human design, it's kind of shared that it's not really important too much to worry about 
uh, your incarnation cross as far as like a goal to get to it. You naturally just become it when you start to heal and come into balance within all of your gates, especially your sun and earth on both your personality and your design, because those hold the most influence as far as the neutrinos or the way the energy is imprinting into you in this lifetime. So on your left-hand side, you're going to see the design and I will click over here that you can see just the design aspect of me. So this is coming from more of a soul imprint or a subconscious level. This is also really about the design. So think of the design as also the vehicle. The vehicle is your body and your body is made up of all of the cellular tissues and all of the imprints that you were gifted from your ancestral lineage, so your mother and your father, your family line. So truly your body is kind of like a library of karma of all of the generations before you that you have the opportunity to heal. So within your very body is a whole library and this library holds awesome information within it. So there's a lot of positive attributes from it, but we all know families that are a little out of alignment. <laughs> so within you and in this lifetime, not only are you healing you, but you have the ability to heal ancestral karma, debt, family lineage, to restore love back to the family. Uh, and if you ever kind of want to know a little bit about how some of these blueprints of our family imprint onto us, I invite you to see my video on family constellations. It's a beautiful, beautiful practice for really starting to heal a lot of the design aspect of our chart. So our design aspect is, again, subconscious. Subconscious is just the innate programmings that we've bought into. It holds the majority of our kind of not self programming that we've really just inherited that we get to either come into balance of or even can even sim symbolize to some degree some of the stuff that is from the past that we are now here to heal and to bring into the now moment. So as a subconscious, as we start to evolve into adult, we will start to become more aware of these things. But in our earlier years in life, a lot of the red lines on our chart and the gates activated by the red are going to kind of feel as though um, our friends know we do it, but we'll be like, I don't do that. What do you mean I do that? <laughs> so it's kind of more subconscious. But as we start to really get to know ourselves and, and to do the shadow work and to heal ourselves, we become aware of all of our subconscious actions as well. So these are all of the gates that were activated about three months before the day you were born. So this is more about your design crystal of, of the gift that the earth has given. The, the design crystal of the earth gives a part of a blueprint up into, into the embryo, into your mother's womb. And then this is part of what is helping to kind of determine a lot of your life path and what you are here to be a part of, to be a agent of change for. And so this is an amazing aspect that human design brings in to add to some of the influences that we look at with our astrological chart so that we can even see on a deeper level some of the subconscious things that we are processing and healing in our lifetime. And so when you add your two together, then you get your entire chart. So they are both defining your chart. The number one thing to know is that even though some of your chart is colored in and some of it is not, you are the entire chart. All of it. All of it is you. You are just experiencing it and expressing it in different ways. So you will see that when a center is colored in, a center is very much a place that harbors an a specific energy and each of the centers have different energies and I won't get into each of the centers in this particular video so it won't get too long but this is pretty much what all of our topics center around 
uh, as we progress is about what the energy of the centers are, what the energy of the gates are, what the energy of the channels are, and what the shadow forms and the gift forms are within them, and how we see how they influence us and, and how we can bring them into balance in our life. So when you have a gate active in it and a gate active in the center that it's connected to through a channel, then that defines a channel in between them. So you're going to see in my chart, I have the 43 and I have the 23, which activates the channel in between it and the channel of structuring. So you'll also see what are called hanging gates. A hanging gate, so if you look at the Ajna Center at the very top, you're going to see I have gate 61, but I do not have gate 24. Therefore, 61 does not have an energy all the way through to the head center. So I have said that totally backwards. I do apologize. So the head center is where I have gate 61, and it is wanting to connect to the Ajna Center with 24. And because I don't have 24 lit up, you can see that my uh, that my head center has remained open or blank, undefined, uncolored in. So this leads us to understanding when there are two gates that connect from one center to the other, that is what colors in the center. A center can only color in if two gates connect together to complete a channel between them. The channel can be completed by either the personality or the design or both. You will see some lines in there that look like candy cane stripes and that's because it's defined not only by the design side but also the personality side. So it just means that you have multiple planets activating that gate which means it has a lot more play or influence in your life. When you have an undefined or open center, this is the place where I would next say to put your, your focus or your attention because this is the places where you are absorbing and taking in the world around you. That in human design, that your open centers are where you are more prone to be your not self and also where you came to learn your greatest kind of lessons in this life into knowing the world so much better through these centers. Because again, you're absorbing the world around you on an amplified level through these centers, which means you're just soaking all of this in. And if you don't, if you don't know yourself and you don't have boundaries there, you're just absorbing everything. So you just means you're a jumble of everybody else's stuff. And our job is to get to a place where we can actually use the centers for a very beneficial or a healing process, which means you can be empathetic, you can be compassionate, you can understand people on an even deeper level through your open centers, but only if you know who you are to such a level that you can really sense and feel when somebody else's field has entered into yours. And therefore, then you can use it as, as an agent for, for healing, as a very compassionate way to really be empathetic and understand other people. But until then, the open centers are a powerful place to begin to understand where you're absorbing other people's energy within your field. And each one has a, a different kind of impulse or pressure. We have the uh, head center and the root center are going to be pressure centers. We have different motors within, which is going to be creating waves and impulses within us. And so just knowing that Every single center has a little bit of a different energy to it and how it's bringing information into us, but that every single gate, again, is how our soul and our, our higher mind consciousness is entering into this reality in order to have an experience. Our job is to clean up our perceptions so that our perceptions are coming from higher mind, not belief systems of others around us, and that within it, we have multiple different ways in which the pressures of, of uh, information either from the universe or information from this earth-based realm is entering into us and all of it is wanting to have an expression to be creation, to expand, 
and to experience. So the micro and the macro, that's exactly what the universe is doing. The universe is continually growing and experiencing and expanding and creating and being. And that's what we are really a micro of, is a microcosm of just expanding and experiencing and being. And we do that by getting all the crap out of the way, all the shadows out of the way, all of the anxieties out of the way, all of the fears out of the way, and just start to be a vessel for our higher self so that we can be the vehicle of our higher mind, of our consciousness, of our higher self, so that we can really be in service to others, so that we can really be that beautiful energy on the planet that is just being an expression of creation, perpetuating in the expansion of all that is. So just to know that every, um, the last thing you're going to see um, on your chart there is you're also going to see something that says a not self theme. And I just love to just kind of touch on this because every single type has a not self theme. And when you read your not self theme, so for manifesting generators and generators, it's going to be frustration. And for manifestors, it'll be anger. For, for the reflector and for the projector, we all have our own different not self theme, okay? So if a projector is feeling bitterness or if a manifester is feeling anger, sometimes a manifesting generator feels anger and frustration. You know, if we feel any of these things, it's just a signpost and a tip to say, hey, wait a minute. If I have this vibration going on right now, this means I'm not honoring my truth and something's out of alignment within my design. What is not in the flow of my truth right now? What have I agreed to that is not correct for me? <laughs> That's what we could really just start to look at. What have I agreed to? What am I in the middle of? Where am I expending my energy in a way that is not correct? for me. And so just to know that that's an amazing way to begin to see what is or is not correct for you. So just showing you that you have the ability to look at your human design chart, your personality uh, is determined by where the planetary systems were from the moment of your birth, where those planets were on your chart in your birth, activate different gates, and where you were about three months before you were born, activate the gates for your design. And as you look at these gates, each of these shows a unique way in which your soul and your, your consciousness is entering into your life experience. And that each of these gates has the ability and the desire through some sort of electromagnetism to want to connect to the center of the other side of that channel. And that when those two centers, those two gates connect, they create a channel and a channel is where you have this electromagnetism within your life, that it creates a clean flow of energy that allows you to flow that full expression of what those gates and that channel is here to express for you. That within your human design chart, it shows you with your open centers where you may be taking in more of other people's energy and where you came to learn life, to learn your life lessons and to learn more about your truth of who you are and how to stand up for yourself, create healthy boundaries while still being able to be a full participant with all others in this life as a way to, for us as a whole, as humanity, to inspire each other, to help each other grow so that we can become spiritually evolved adults as a human species, as a human race, that we can move ourselves out of the ice ages of the mind and consciousness in our heart and melt the walls around our hearts so that we can be heart-based beings again, making decisions that are correct for us so that we can live a life that fulfills us and allows us to perpetuate that whole experience of being part of the cosmos, the micro and the macro, of having new experiences in this universe that is always expanding and experiencing and creating a whole new reality. So with that, I just wanted to share that little bit about starting to read your chart. And hopefully that helps as we go into more of the details 
uh, with future classes and other videos as far as kind of more of the details on the gates, the centers, the channels, and many of the planetary systems and even the karmic astrology that is all tied in right within your human design chart. So thank you so much for taking the time to be a part of this experience with me in this video. If you ever feel as though you want a more in-depth reading of your chart, I do offer chart readings and I record them for you. So if you wanna just check out my website at www.withbecca.com, I would be so happy to connect with you and share more about your blueprint and your heart's compass with you in this life. Thank you so much.